Greetings, this is Vespasian and my rather unpleasant trusty sidekick and today we're going to be doing the Anglo-Saxon army. Um, we've got the... Ock, oot, ock, oot, ock, oot, ock, oot, ock, oot, What are you doing? Ock. And a Saxon chant. Oh, 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 what is it? It means ock out. What does ock mean? Foreigner. Ock's foreigner. Right. Okay. Anyway, we've got the rule book, um, which is the... Uh, Ancient, late antiquity, and early medieval. Start down fin! Start down fin! Start down fin! Start down fin! What's he doing now? A fin! I don't even know a Saxon chant. And what does that one mean? It means a slaughter fin. Right. Okay. Yeah, if you play a Saxon, you can know. Cross. Holy Cross! Holy Cross! <laughs> Holy Cross! Holy Cross! Which means? <laughs> Holy Cross! Right! Okay, thank you! <laughs> <clears throat> can, can we have no more Saxon chants now, please? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have the late antiquity book, but which has Saxons inside it. If you turn to page 40, <laughs> then you will find Saxons very quickly. And we have the Saxon army list. As you know, we've already been doing Saxons, and we haven't got the rule book to actually work from, so we've been sort of making as we go along, and now we've got the rule book, we can actually start playing. Finish? Stop it! Yes, stop it. Now, um, I'll get to the game cards in a minute. Um, the Saxon armor list is very much like the Viking armor list. If you watch the video about the Vikings, this is here. Uh, this is the, well, the late Saxon army. Uh, there is the early Saxon army, which is set at the period of the Saxon invasion of Britain, if you believe in the Saxon invasion of Britain. Um, so you can use that army, which is a sort of late Germanic Gothic type army. Um, or you can use this army, which is the, the one that mainly fought the Vikings, really, which is why we're using this army. This is a later English army. And, oh, look, I say English. Yeah, okay, right. Who are the Saxons? Who are the Saxons? Do I, do British? Yeah, Saxon means sword sons, uh, sons of the sword. Uh, the Saxons were never actually a people. They were a conglomeration of English, uh, Celtic British, uh, Romano Celtic British, um, Germans uh, from, well, I suppose, Saxony, uh, uh, Angles, Dukes, and Danes, basically, who were invited to come over to Britain by the British uh, for complicated reasons. Um, and they came along and uh, settled in. Schleuger, um, oh, Anglia. Uh, so they settled in Anglia quite happily. Uh, Anglia is named after the Angles, because that's the area that the Angles settled. And they basically settled down and, well, we all became Saxon, quite simply. Um, there's no archaeological evidence to back up the idea that the Saxons invaded Britain. Uh, there's no burnt homesteads, there's no sign of a collapse after the Romans left. Generally, it appears that Britain carried on perfectly well and happy after the Romans left. Yeah. And in fact, carried on trading with the Byzantine Empire. The Western Empire collapsed in 410 AD when Rome burned. Yeah. So Western it's Empire, Western it's Empire it's completely destroyed. Franks over and France and renamed it France. Franks over and Gaul and renamed it France. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and uh, basically, yeah, the, the Roman Empire collapsed. Uh, the Roman Empire in the West carried on perfectly fine for the next thousand years until Constantinople was finally burnt by the barbarians. But uh, Britain seems to have carried on pretty well. Um, there's a lot of archaeological evidence to show that Britain carried on trading with the Roman Empire and carried on maintaining a, an efficient military and carried on running just as it had done when the Romans were here. Um, we certainly were buying and selling a lot of goods from the Western Roman Empire, uh, probably through boating now, uh, networks of ships bringing things backwards and forwards to trade. Uh, so that's it. Uh, one, one idea is that, uh, oh, well, let's say the Honourable Bede um, wrote that a Pope um, saw Pope Gregory? Yes. Possibly. Um, saw some, saw some uh, Nordic slaves, some Saxon slaves, slave girls, 
and said, who, who are those people? And they said, oh, they're Saxons. And, and this guy said, they're Saxons. And, and the Pope said, oh, they look like angels. Send somebody, St. Augustine, uh, to go and make all these men Christian. And, and he came to the north and made Britain Christian, which is a huge sack of poo, to be <laughs> honest. Because Britain was already a Christian country if we had churches and stuff. Uh, Britain was nice and happy Christian. And then along came St. Augustine and found a completely Christian country. And then later on, other people decided to invent this idea that we were barbarians. Uh, yeah, England was Christian during the Roman period, when Rome became Christian and, and basically remained so. Uh, and a lot of the Vikings were Christian as well, even before the Vikings converted, so... Just filling in the blanks there. So this is the late Saxon army. Um, as with the, the Viking army, the, there is a bit of discrepancy with the idea of Thanes and Hauschkals. Thanes are Hauschkals. Thane is... Uh, Hauschkal is Hausgard in German. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, and... Uh, sorry, Hauschkal is Hausgard in uh, English, ancient English, ancient English, Old English, and Thane is uh, Gard in German. So it's the same word, it means the same thing. Uh, so yeah, so that's basically, um, you have the main units are the Hashkals supported by Thanes. Thanes have more or less the same combat, unless you upgrade them to Berserkers and stuff. Uh, you upgrade it to double-handed weapons, which is in the Viking armies, Berserkers. Um, the Saxon army roughly had um, one heavy axeman per eight men. In the same way the Vikings did. Uh, I explained how it worked with the Vikings. I'm not going to do the same with this one. But basically, um, you would have a shield wall. The Saxons typically fought with swordsmen and axemen in the front rank. And then the second rank would be spears, spearmen. And they would fight in a phalanx with the spears over the top. And the men with the swords and axes would hack, hack the shield down. And the men with the spears would spear. Hey. And that's basically how the Saxons used to fight. That's a good way. It's a very efficient way of fighting. Yeah. Um, it descended from the late Roman way of fighting. Pretty Romans, hard to disorder. Yes, the, 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 basically the late Romans, uh, who survived into uh, to the Dark Ages. The were Romans. Yes. Exactly. So. Uh, well, the harsh cows are basically regular soldiers, uh, professional soldiers. Um, so sort of things, it's the same word. Uh, so there isn't an option, unlike the Vikings, which is which is completely right. Uh, there's an option here to upgrade troops to long spears. Although I would I would assume that um, the Saxon army carried long spears, and um, they would use phalanx anyway. It would be part of their way of doing it. So upgrading a unit to become long spear troops seems a bit weird, but I let them have it. You know, it's in the rules, so you can use it. Uh, but I would say that all the troops would have long spears, and you would also have the swordsmen and axemen in the front rank. So you, you, they would be trained to fight in phalanx anyway. Uh, and you do have the option to use them in phalanx, which is a great thing. You actually have the phalanx rule for all the troops. You can upgrade all of them to use phalanx. So that's very historically accurate. It's, it's, they've done a good job with it. Then you have cavalds, which are basically, um, well, like husbandmen. Uh, they're, they're freemen, uh, men who are not serfs or anything, and they basically are these guys. These guys are basically the professional, uh, non-professional soldiers. Uh, these guys are professional soldiers. In old Britain, ancient Britain, um, you would do a term of service, a bit like, um, what's the thing we used to do in Britain? National service. Yeah. It was like national service where you would spend a couple of seasons in the army, you would be taught to fight in phalanx, you would taught to use weapons, taught to defend yourself, and then you would go home, and if ever there was a war, you would be called up as a soldier. So, that's what these guys are. The, um, I have colour-coded the shields, you may notice. Um, all the And also, all the Saxon infantry are in uniforms. They wear a leather under halbuck and a standard halbuck over the top, a chainmail suit. Um, and they have leather armour underneath, and I've sort of colour-coded them by giving them all red trousers to give them a, a look of, uh, slight look of uniformity. Uh, 
basically like the late Romans, to be honest. Uh, your Saxon medium stuff, your carols, uh, they're basically in normal civilian clothing. Um, they may have worn, or some certainly did wear, leather jackets, but I haven't given them leather jackets simply because they would look too much like my Vikings. Uh, because the Vikings are on the leather jackets, and so I decided not to do that with these. So these are in normal civilian clothing, but the shields are all it's more or less colour coded, and so you can see instantly that they're irregular troops. Generally, the shield would be as to who raised them. So each thane, not thane, earl. Oh yeah. Earl? No thane, no thane. thane? Each thane, each yeah. thane. Yes, thing. Each thing uh, would be a regional governor, uh, and he would be in charge of that area, and he would be in charge of raising the local. Oh, your thanes. Sorry, we just had a problem there with the camera. It plunked out on us. Uh, bad battery. So, uh, your thanes would be your local commanders. They would be local governors, um, sheriff, whatever. Uh, and they would be in charge in time of war when the evil, nasty Vikings or the Franks crossed the river or the Danes came then all the Normans, um, you, would, you would need to ra raise a local militia. Uh, in the north they called them barons, not thanes. They were barons. barons. Uh, but in the south they were thanes. So, um, so the thanes would raise local militia uh, and they would be already trained troops who would then be basically aid the regular army. Uh, the regular army is these guys and these guys would march all over Britain to wherever they were needed to defend. Uh, famously, Battle of um, Stamford Bridge, the British Army marched all the way up from the south, all the way up to Stamford Bridge, fought at Stamford Bridge, and then in three days marched all the way back down to um, Hastings. Oh, not that the battle was at Hastings, but who cares. And they, they fought at the Battle of Hastings. So these guys were the min mobile heavy infantry, uh, your Roman legionaries basically, or your latter day Roman Ooh, legionaries. Pasta. Um, well, yeah, but the Romans had already nicely built roads and the British maintained them throughout the Dark Age period. <laughs> the whole idea that Dark Ages, we just lived in mud huts and ate our own poo, was, 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 was fake. We carried on trading perfectly well, we carried, maintained the roads, we maintained the towns and villages. Um, not much changed. We just carried on living as Romans, really. Yeah. And so these guys would march up to where they were needed, and then the local baron, if you're up north, Use a baron. Uh, if you're down south, you, you got a thane. And these guys would be the guys who would be raised to fight. Hence, they've all got the yellow and black themed shield. Uh, because I just kind of made out that this was probably in East Anglia and that's the colours. So um, that's where this battle would be fought. That's where I'm setting it. Uh, but I could equally do, do the same for anywhere. Um, you don't get much option for cavalry. Now you can get mounted thanes, uh, which are, you can only field them in small units in the rule book, which is actually fine for the Saxon army. There weren't that many horses. We used to call horses lunch. Yeah. Back then. In Britain, we used to. Well, when people fought us, they were not too about killing the horses, because that's. Yeah. That's it, basically it, a challenge. Yeah. Why would you kill such a thing? Yes. Yeah. Uh, basically, when the evil, stinky Normans invaded with their French manners, and their funny names for food, <laughs> they arrived and, and, and brought words like pork <laughs> to Britain and steak and gammon uh, and, and, and what are they called? Chicken? Turkey? No, that's the bird that lives in Turkey. <laughs> um, so uh, basically the French came here and brought those silly words. We used to call, call animals the name of the, 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 name of the uh, the, the, they used to call them the name of the meat because they didn't know what the animal looked like before it was on the plate because they were posh and so they had pork to eat instead of pig we ate pigs so when we killed a pig we called it pig <laughs> and we ate pig so pig on the plate eat it pig and then the French came and, and said no we're going to call it pork and I was like well, fine whatever <laughs> still call it pig me I don't know about you still Tastes like pig, smells like pig, it's lovely. Mm, bacon. So, um, basically, think we're sticks. Uh, yeah, so you do have an option for. Oh, no, I never, never finished the thing about the horses. Yes, of course, the, the French brought horses across. 
and um, in, fr- in, in not French, in anywhere, French, actually, yes, not they're, French anywhere. French, yes, not French They're called the uh, Normans. Normans. The Normans, who are actually Vikings, um, brought horses across. And in in Normandy and throughout France and and, and, and that area, if you kill a horse, then you they hung you. Because you, you know you killed like it was illegal. A, a to kill really, a horse. really 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 expensive. Yeah. So if you position. fought if you fought in a battle, then the man would be on a horse and the horse would be <laughs> armoured. Because no one would dare throw a spear at a horse, because they might injure it. So they'd fight the man and ignore the horse. But when they landed in Britain, we just <laughs> hit the horse with an axe and then killed the rider. Uh, because we called horses lunch. Uh, horse, horse meat. Mm, yum, yum. <laughs> you, can't, you can't hang them if they're all dead. Yeah, you can't hang them if they're dead. So uh, that upset the Normans, they didn't like that, we were killing horses. So then the Normans had to stand off, they couldn't get into our infantry because we just hit them. <laughs> so they couldn't actually push through our infantry, which is what they were trained to do. Uh, they would push into the infantry with a lance, and then they would draw a, a axe or, or, or a heavy sword, and they'd hack their way into the infantry. But if they got anywhere near the house, British house cows, we killed the horse. We yep. cut the horse's legs off, hit it in the head. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, and it was embarrassing going home saying, Mummy, I lost your horse. Yeah. Oh, you don't go home at all. Well, if you're fighting the British, chances are you're not going home. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, you're not talking about that, eh? Yeah. Um, 200,000 Normans came to Britain during the um, Norman occupation, and the survival rate was very, very small. Um, the Normans found it very hard to have rulers in each kingdom uh, because we used to just kill them. Um, you know, ruler would come and say, you've got to pay taxes. And the, the Saxons would say, we haven't paid taxes since the Romans left. <laughs> I ain't paying taxes to you. Foreigner. Orc. Orc. Yeah. Orc. 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 Not to say that. What? I don't like you. Sorry, I'd no. say that. Yeah. It's like a UKIP like that in Valley, isn't it, being Saxon? Yeah. <laughs> oot, 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 oot. <laughs> out. Foreigners out. Foreigners out. Piss off, foreigners. I don't like you. But no, you're not allowed to say that sort of stuff. Anyway, we have the option for light horses in the army list, which is uh, stamina of four, which means they're medium cavalry, uh, light cavalry, medium cavalry. Um, if you're doing some of the eastern uh, parts of Britain, sorry, the western parts of Britain, uh, like Northumbrians had a lot of cavalry. Uh, so the Northumbrian Saxons had access to large amounts of cavalry. Uh, so uh, you can't really do that on this arbor list. Uh, but they were available if you want to use them. Uh, so I would suggest you use your, probably your late Roman cavalry would be best for that. Um, they wore cloaks and big plumed helmets, so they probably were a bit Roman yeah. in their design. So you could, you could use that sort of stuff. Uh, are you Sarmatians? You could use uh, late Sarmatians uh, for this sort of ca- this this period. That's in Britain. That's fine. Not the armoured ones. The unarmoured ones. Uh, so basically, a heavy in heavy cavalry in uh, male armour, hey. basically. Uh, and of course, you could use Normans, um, but the helmet would be wrong. So you could use a Norman body with a Saxon shield with a round shield. And instead of the long shield, and uh, use a Saxon helmet out of the helmet. Saxon box, you're bound to have lots of spare helmets, so you could do that. In fact, we might do that. Should we do some North- Northumbrian cavalry? Mm. Well, look how popul- popular this is. Yeah, well, I think it might be an interesting little project to do. Um, you could put Roman plumes on them. Don't get ideas too fast like no, you well, always do. Th- there are all these things you can do. Um, so then you've got your... Lastly, uh, you've got three different types of skirmish infantry. You've got slings, which are these guys here. Slingers. Um, you can see there. And you've got javelin men and bowmen. Um, I haven't been able to source bowmen yet. I've had a look at uh, a few websites with bowmen on it, but I'm trying to find decent bowmen for the Vikings, preferably in male, and for the all leather armour, and bowmen in um, sort of cloth cut. Uh, and I'm not really sure which way to go with them, so I haven't got those to field as a unit yet. Uh, but that's basically your overall army. 
and it's not a bad army. It's uh, quite interesting. Um, it's, lastly, better than, it's better than, than the Vikings. Yeah, because you can use Phalanx. Uh, you've got Tough Fighters and Stubborn in the same unit, which is handy. Uh, Valiant. Uh, I think the Vikings are Valiant as well, actually. Yeah, some of the Viking units are Valiant. Uh, but you've got val most, all, all the medium and heavy oh, yeah. stuff is Valiant. It's all Valiant. Stubborn. Uh, stubborn, Tough Fighters, tough fighters elite. elite. Um, all your Ashkals and things are Elite. Good. So that's it's all good. Yeah. It's all pretty good. Uh, it's a tough army to beat. It's a tough army to push off the battlefield, which is of course what it was. It was a tough army to push off the battlefield. <laughs> they tended to just stand there and fight to <laughs> death and win. Constantly. And win, yes. Uh, well, yeah, Saxon Britain. Um, so there is another rule, which is the same as the Vikings. I'll do it again because I like doing it. It's fun. You can mix your units, which means you put harsh cows or husbandmen or what are they on here? Thanes. There you go. Why Thanes? Why, why do they pick Thanes as the unit type? Because the Thane is a leader of men. Obviously there's so many leaders of men. So there must be a lot of leaders of men. I mean, um, so there you go, you get Thanes in your front rank or harsh cows. Uh, then you put your light infantry, uh, sorry, your medium infantry, your cowls, your, your basically your peasants, uh, your freemen who are trained in the back rank, like so. Uh, can you see that? Does it look alright? have to be careful with this camera. I have to be careful with this because it's not very good at focusing this camera. Yeah, uh, and the idea behind that is. Uh, your rear troops will put their spears over the top of the front armoured troops. Your armoured troops at the front will take the hit and then you can hack down the enemy shield and spear downwards in typical phalanx formation. Um, so quite a useful thing Why to do. Boss? Yes, and you can make your whole army, if you've got enough units, you could make your whole, whole army, instead of being medium infantry and heavy infantry, you can make it all into heavy infantry. Which is very, very um, painful for the enemy. Which is very painful for the enemy. <laughs> you, can very, you, you can really upgrade your army and... and, and, and yeah. you, you don't have to upgrade them anyway, they're already elite. Yeah, well, they're already elite. So, but, it's just yes. like, basically, you're fighting an entire elite army. So, uh, you can do that. Um, the, the rules basically state that a mixed unit such as this, with uh, Carols in the back and regular infantry in the front, um, that will fight as if it's a Harshkal unit. So it's actually a Harshkal unit that's fighting, but when it becomes shaken, that's when you've taken your six hits, then it becomes a Carol unit. So it has the, that the, is basically classed as the rib, the back rank. So that's quite interesting. And lastly, the cards. Uh, just like our Hail Caesar, Caesar, Caesar Romans, um, we've made a set of cards to play the game with, uh, and we have carols there. We have carols. And slingers. And I'm, I'm, I can't focus this, so you just Well, we'll just put them down. Yeah. Doesn't um, matter. I'm afraid. Uh, we have carols, sli slingers, I thought it said singers then. Slingers. <laughs> Javelin men. Javelins. Oh, these guys here. And lastly, the house cards and things are on the same card because they have they have the same stats, but they just have a couple of rules different. I so it's all written on the same thing. Why do you make sharp figures? I took a nail. Or did well, you stab yourself? <laughs> I'm sorry, How many I'm times have these, <laughs> these Saxons injured you? Right, and if it is here, it has cards and things. And things, yes. And a painful finger. And a painful finger. <laughs> so that is your Saxon army. Um, that's what we've got done so far. We have a lot more Saxons to base up and paint. Um, sadly, haven't had time to do all this, but we have tried to get as much done as we have. We've got the rule book, <laughs> we've got the rules, we've got the cards. And you've got now, this for Christmas. And this is a Christmas present. And we have the King of the Britons on the front, who is the greatest ever living Briton. Well, he's the only British king to be called great, anyway. Alfred the Great. Alfred the Great. If you um, hear from Alfred. Alfred saved Britain from the Viking invasion and from collapse. 
uh, Britain was falling apart. Don't get carried away. No, but a lot of people were deciding to join the Vikings. Uh, and Alfred sort of pulled the fat out of the fire. He stopped the Danes, he stopped the Franks, and he stopped the Vikings. So he pulled it, but pulled it together. Um, but the Queen's, our Queen, has spent, what, 60 years on the throne? She's the longest reigning queen now. Yeah, longest right? reigning monarch. And yeah, she's no. overseen the complete destruction of the British Empire, the collapse of Britain into a basically a poor country. Right, and... and yeah, well, Le 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 when you compare the different Le monarchs... Leave a like um, if you enjoyed this video. Uh, you don't have to... Oh, I was going to tell you how cool um, Victoria was. Uh, <laughs> um, subscribe if you want to, you don't have to, but... I think everybody's watching the videos are just subscribing anyway, so thank you. You've been very good, very good help. Um, well, we're, we're here with this, so thank yeah, you. Yeah, we um, like this, yeah, we will buy this. And uh, comment down below for any Q and A videos you want, you want us to do. Uh, only questions, but you know you don't have to do questions. You can do well done and all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, um, but we can't really comment on a well done. No, but you know, well done. It's nice to get. It, it, nice brings, to get up, it brings up the morale. Yeah, it is nice to get people saying well done. It's very nice. Um, and bye. Makes it all worthwhile. It does make it worthwhile. Bye. Bye.